What's up everybody? This is Matt for the TechnoAx channel with an update for you guys on February 6, 2015. How are you guys doing? So this is not really an update video once again. Uh, there's not really been much happening over the last week other than the music that I've added to my channel. As always, if you want to check out that music, it's listed down below in the description. Check out what you like and download what you like as well. Now I don't have a lot of romantic pieces on my channel. In fact, I've kind of ignored Valentine's Day as a holiday to write music for. I guess some of the reasons are that, number one, I don't really consider Valentine to be a major holiday that we celebrate. It's just something that happens. Nobody, nobody gets a day off for Valentine's Day. We just give each other cards and chocolates. I do kind of celebrate Valentine's Day, mostly because it's something that you celebrate with your significant other and yourself, but it's not really something that I see on YouTube celebrated all that often. I do admit though that the YouTube videos that I watch fall on the debate and, and uh, video game side, so I'm probably missing the side that actually uses this sort of music. I do like writing it though, so expect to hear a couple more tunes, at least one more before Valentine's rolls around. Moving along, I'm going to try and answer a question from you guys, one that you guys seem to ask me a lot, and that is what software do I use to produce music? Once again, this is a question that I feel that is going to have an answer that is both vague and complex. The reason is that there are a lot of software suites and programs that you can use to produce music. Moreover, I'm writing music on a PC, and that answer is not going to apply so much to Macintosh computers. Granted, some of the same software is available on Macintosh computers, but I feel that that software runs differently on Macintosh computers, and there are a few things available on Macintosh computers that are not available to me. For me, though, I write music in one of two different ways. For my electronic dance music, I use Propellerhead Reason. It's a great little piece of software that allows you to construct your own synthesizers using basic building blocks that are really high quality. Most music production software, are also known as digital audio workstations, provide a basic suite of synthesizers that you can use right out of the gate to produce music. With Propeller Head Reason though, the synthesizers and instruments that you get are top notch and you could literally produce professional instruments almost immediately actually. There is definitely a learning curve to Propeller Head Reason and you'll find yourself twisting knobs and pushing sliders and tweaking every setting that you can find to get the sounds that you want out of your instruments. Once you get past that learning curve, however, you'll find yourself with a piece of software that is very versatile in what it can do and also very professional in what it can produce. The one drawback to propeller head reason is that it can't support VST instruments, like the VST instrument plugins that I mentioned in my last update video. Any additional instrument that you purchase for propeller head reason has to be in its proprietary form. Any new effect or instrument or sampler that you get will be sold directly through the propeller head store as a rack extension. And you can't use any of these effects or instruments in other digital audio workstations unless Reason itself is rewired into the program. One more weakness of propeller and Reason is that it cannot record directly from musical instruments or microphones directly. This means that if you want to use some sort of guitar in your mix on Propeller Ad Reason, you're going to have to record it on another program first and load it onto a sampler in order for you to be able to use it. Other than those two weaknesses, I highly recommend this program. It is a staple for my electronic dance music and it will be for some time. The other piece of software that I use for music production, for everything else that I produce actually, is called Cakewalk Sonar. I use an older version of Cakewalk Sonar and this is a choice that I've made specifically because I think the user interface of Cakewalk Sonar 8.5 is a lot better than the later versions that they've come out with. I feel that the later versions of Sonar 
are a little bit more complex and a little bit more cluttered and less intuitive to work with. And so I have opted to use the older piece of software to write my music. That said, Cakewalk Sonar is an excellent platform to write music with VSTs and also record my guitars with. A lot of the times that you guys hear me experimenting around with new sounds, it's basically me playing around with a new VST instrument in the Cakewalk Sonar environment. So in review, I use Propeller and Reason for most of my electronic dance music and for everything else I use Cakewalk Sonar 8.5. Now that being said, I want to stress that these two pieces of software are by no means the only choices that you have for music production. There are so many choices that you have, in fact, that it's, it would be overwhelming. I could take an hour to list them all and point out their strengths and weaknesses. And the price range between each title is immense. You could start out with a basic piece of digital audio workstation software for not much money at all. Reaper, for instance, is actually free to try for 90 days, and if you want to buy it, it's about $69. And Reaper is a quality piece of software. It can handle VSTs very easily. It doesn't have a very big memory requirement, and the music that it produces is very professional sounding, provided that you know how to work the tools, of course. Really, for all pieces of music production software or digital audio workstations, the biggest challenge is learning the piece of software. Just like Sony Vegas or Final Cut Pro, there is a lot of functionality that the software needs to fit on the user interface. So operating the user interface becomes the biggest challenge other than music theory and, and learning to play instruments uh, to basically producing your own sounds and your own music. And I have some of those same challenges myself. As I stated earlier, I use the older Cakewalk Sonar 8.5 rather than the newer stuff, the X1 and the X2, simply because I feel that the newer user interfaces are a lot more convoluted and a lot less natural to operate with. But maybe I haven't had the time or spent the time to learn those new user interfaces and so I'm not as familiar with that side of things than the older pieces of software that I'm used to using. You could argue either way actually, whether or not I'm willing to learn something new or whether the interface on the new piece of software is just completely garbage. But really you can extend that debate to software in general in the last five years. For me personally, I hate the surface functionality of Windows 8 and I always opt for the desktop version of everything. But for me, maybe I'm just used to doing that because that's what they've done for the last 10 years. And this new Surface functionality is just basically completely foreign to me. But that's a debate for another time and another channel. This is a music channel after all. And I hope you enjoyed this update and let me know what I can do in the future to make these updates a little bit more entertaining. I realize that I do have a low voice and it's a bit of a challenge trying to show some inflection over the microphone. I'm a little bit more personable uh, in person, uh, it's just that sometimes talking to a microphone and a camera is a bit of a challenge to me because I have no interaction with the camera or the microphone whatsoever. You guys are my audience though and I do appreciate you guys very well. I do appreciate my subscribers. I do appreciate the Patreon people that have contributed to, to my channel so far. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you very much.